Live from New Orleans, it's theCUBE. Covering Veeam on 2017. Brought to you by Veeam. Welcome back to the Big Easy, everybody. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. I'm Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman. And this is our first day of coverage of Veeam on 2017. We'll be here for two days. Haman Ferreira is here. He's the CTO of BankServe Africa in, from Seth Africa. Welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, always a pleasure to be here. So, uh, quite, a, quite a tour for you. You've been over here for a while, checking out a few different you know, technology events. And uh, what do you think of Veeam on? Uh, Amazing experience, uh, so it's always great connecting with the partners, connecting uh, with the vendors, and uh, with my fellow customers. So uh, there's only one of us that can tell war stories, and that is to one another. So, so it's always great connecting with people that knows what you're going through. So tell us about your your organization, the bank, wh what you guys are focused on. Yeah, so banks have, is the mutual that uh, runs for South Africa, uh, um, a payments clearing house. So we get owned by the banks and we deliver services back into the banks. Okay. So therefore, uh, as you guys know, uh, the payments industry is going through a bit of a modernization exercise. Um, so long gone the traditional cash and, uh, and check and it's now all the different digital channels. And these days also all the mobile wallets uh, coming into play. So that necessitated us to have a relook at the architecture. So what is the new always on service levels all about? Uh, and how do I build architecture that will help me exceed those service levels to the customers? Um, so for the past year, I'm in the job for about a year now. So it, um, to, we've been going through an infrastructure refresh program, looking at every layer of a technology stack. And um, going from a new converged architecture right through the VMworld, the uh, Linux, Microsoft, Oracle, SQL, and then finally on top, of a Veeam product, so uh, it gives me that great opportunity to to protect data. Data is the new currency, I suppose, and we all got to, uh, uh, to make sure that's always available, uh, it's protected, data integrity is, is in place, so um, therefore the whole product suite actually fits quite nicely into providing that 24-7, 365 availability. So that big, the big driver in your business is, I mean, the question of Senior execs at banks always ask us, do people need banks? So that's a question that you've, you've, you've got to ask. You're serving the banks, yeah. mobile, and the whole, like you say, digital payments. Yeah. Blockchain is a, you yeah. know, potentially a very disruptive force. So how does that affect, I mean, in digital is data. We say that a million times in the cubes. How does that affect how you protect data? Not only the volume, but just the, the Yeah, the and what we see is different data. channels coming on, uh, in South Africa, for instance, we've got like 150 odd mobile wallets. So how do I wow. how do I build the interoperability in between them that uh, mm. you can actually use your bank's wallet with another bank in the region or anywhere but globally? How do I connect to Apple Pay and all of those sort of things? So it necessitated us really looking at the total architectural stack. Um, so going through the whole modernization of the infrastructure. Uh, you build it out for resiliency, you build it out for that high availability, you make sure that it is covered from every single angle. Um, and then you partner with the right the guys. So I've mentioned uh, 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 the Dell EMC, uh, uh, the Oracles, VMware, um, and then Veeam to, 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 to make sure that I can provide the right information to the right customer at the right time. And should something go wrong, then I have got that safe back door. It's almost like we must transformed um, the old traditional backup world where it was always that little grudge purchase at the end, almost that insurance policy, someday I might need you. Uh, and I think with a new stack, they are now moving into the full architecture. They're now part of, of, of plan A and no longer plan B. It's almost taking disaster recovery into true business continuity. And that's really what we want to. So Infrastructure has always been critical for financial services yeah. companies. What's been really interesting to watch, you, you talked kind of that digital transformation. Many of the companies I talk to, it's their developers, they're becoming software companies themselves, yeah. uh, and that puts a whole different kind of stress and strain on, on the IT people. Uh, can, can you give us a little bit of color on that and what, what you've been seeing from kind of the, the business transforming? Are you a software company now? <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I think my 
CEO will have a problem if I call ourselves <laughs> a technology we, company. We, we, we understand but your core business. Yeah, but, yeah. but, but uh, it is in a sense, it, it's that solutioning, making sure that the solution, the product, the end service that you sell goes through the right channels. And for that, we have to think differently about how we develop, what we develop, what we partner in with people, and what do I take back to the tech shop and say, develop this for myself. Talk a little bit about how you approach architecture um, and how that's that's changing, and then I'm interested in where data protection fits in. Because uh, I infer from your title that it's more than just data protection yeah. and availability. <laughs> so describe your philosophy of, of architecture and sort of how you spend your time thinking about how to support this digital transformation. Well, first of all, you've got to understand the customer needs. So what is the SLA that you need to uh, uh, obtain? And how do you actually contract this in this new digital world? So uh, we have a new generation always on, always available, always there. Uh, and once you understand what you are obliged to do, then you can also then take that input into designing the architecture, to getting the infrastructure and the services uh, um, built out that enables you to succeed those SLAs. Um, so th that's always a point of departure for me as a customer. Uh, and if I understand that, then um, to, to pick the right technology uh, solution, the right technology partners. And I was quite fortunate in the South African market that got great support from uh, other vendors, but also the resellers. Um, I've got a partner, Silicon Sky, in South Africa that, uh, that the Caminian rolled out for me at a, at a remarkable pace. Um, so w once you understand that target state that, you, that you're that going to, and, and um, we all know with payments messages now changing, uh, new ISO standards, it's more rich data, so it's more storage, it's more competent on actually managing. So if you don't pick the right tools right now, then that transformational journey will actually be more difficult in a couple of years' time. So. It, um, that was the reason why we selected it and why we built, uh, and we almost chose to build a new target state infrastructure so that we can migrate onto it uh, um, instead of going back and fixing some of the legacy stuff. Uh, so you can imagine some of the check processing systems and EFT systems has now been around for 30, 25 years, all of those sort of things. So it, um, it's time that we really look at it. Um, quicker, faster, better, yeah. simpler. One, one of the big things we're hearing from Veeam here is that it's not just about virtualized environments. They have virtual, they have physical, they're supporting SaaS applications yeah. and, and public cloud. How does cloud fit into your strategy? Do, do you use public cloud as uh, you know, a part of your technology stack? I don't at the moment, but um, being owned by the, by the banks and sitting on a massive data center estate and owning the networks into the banks, um, I'm looking at transforming my business into a financial services cloud business, and a whole company philosophy is building mutual digital infrastructure to the benefit of financial services. Uh, so uh, looking here and having a lot of chats to the partners about how do I enable that sort of secure cloud for financial services within my region. And, and you don't envision that'll be a, a public cloud, is that right? It'll be your cloud? Yeah, sort of. Uh, <laughs> All the benefits of a public cloud uh, in a protected data center, but they already own the shares in. Um, uh, I am a mutual, so therefore there's no profit objective. So I think I can do things at a at a bit of a better uh, a price point, a better solution point. Um, you know, the banking services uh, there's always the overhead of regulations. So. Uh, 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 personal uh, 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 information protection acts, PCI, all of those sort of things, and uh, the being certified in that, I think I can actually transform it and give them the same quality of service, uh, uh, partnering up with some of the big brand so in the world. So, high degrees of automation to succeed at Absolutely. that at that vision, and and what does that mean? That that what you just laid out that vision of 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 of, 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 of cloud that serves your constituents that are other banks. What does that mean for data protection? How would you re-architect your data protection strategy to accommodate that? Yeah, it's from, from all the different angles, right? So picking the right database technology, picking up uh, uh, the right transport layers into it that makes it efficient, that makes it real time. Um, and then once it's in 
a structured format, how do I control that the best? So how does the replication work? How does the backup work? So one of the big advantages for me uh, um, in the Veeam world is that my backup windows actually quite drastically decreased. So, so uh, that gives me just that opportunity to, to, to do more on my maintenance slots. So I can be much more proactive in all the sort of housekeeping. So it, um, this earlier this week, we had the well ransomware exercise. And um, now instead of doing backups, I can, I can make sure that the patch levels is 100% installed mm -hmm. and those sort of things. So it doesn't just come with a, with a data protection of, I guarantee you that the information will be there. Um, I took over environment. It was still type DTL, all of those mm -hmm. uh, things, off-site storage. And uh, um, the auditor always on your case about when last have you tested backup and all of those good things. And um, the solution set gives me the opportunity to, to, to make sure that the last line of defense is now solid. It's tested. It's regularly tested. Uh, and I know that I can provide the right data to the right person at the right time. Yeah. Well, ransomware obviously is on everybody's mind, uh, you know, th th the last couple of weeks. Yes. Uh, I, we don't have to ask if security is a top priority. Absolutely. Obviously it must be. Uh, but how has it changed in the last, you know, year or two in, in, in your environment? Yeah, it's, it's just layer upon layer upon layer, and that's the only thing that uh, one can do is uh, we're just to build it out almost like an onion, make sure that there's another layer, so to with it is, uh, 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 from a data at risk, uh, encryption, t uh, to, to t um, uh, tokenization, uh, to all the different ones. I spend about 37% of my technology budget just on IT security products. So, it's, so it, um, you said 37? 37%, yeah. Wow. So it, um, th that gives us the, that ease of mind. It is, it is my job to be the trusted utility. I'm only the trusted utility because I am the trusted. Um, so I got to make sure that, that, that uh, I protect data and customer information to the absolute. That 37% is excluding staff or that includes staff? Uh, that includes the staff. It does, okay, yeah. so that's a full yeah. budget view. Yeah, that's about. That's a big number. It is a big number. It's, but it's uh, gone but up in the last couple uh, of years? Or? Uh, yeah, uh, but if I tell you that I sit with your credit card information, surely you would demand me to <laughs> make sure that it is actually protected at the right uh, um, levels and layers, and I protect uh, it not only from external, but also from my internal guys, so making sure that the database administrators don't have access to the data, the developers, all of those, masking the right information. Um, so it's the only chance that you've got to, to protect yourself is to, is to layer up and to make sure that there is uh, defense on defense, making sure that you've got all the right management tools in place uh, to, uh, to make sure that uh, um, one of the nice feature sets that I saw now is that uh, um, the Beam can also now sp uh, um, spot some trends or irregular uh, sort of traffic uh, uh, patterns on my network. So it will just form another layer on top of that. Yes, yeah, so the, the, uh, there's, there's obviously, if a company like Veeam's in a position actually to provide analytics on anomalous mm. uh, behavior, because you're, you're backing up change data you know, continuously, and presumably if you're, if somebody's trying to, you know, do some nefarious things, you could see some anomalies in, in there, right? Absolutely, and if I can validate that out of two or three different ways and uh, make sure that I've got all the basics in place, then, then th th I sleep a bit easier at night. Then. Right. All right, we'll leave it there. Hamad, thanks very much for coming to cool. theCUBE. It's good to meet you. Thank you, enjoyed it. All right, thanks you're welcome. Keep it right there, buddy. Stu and I will be back. We're live from Veeam on in New Orleans. Right back.